time of the year we got the pool running in the evening and are starting to go foul I had a look at this here and notice that when the pump is running or when you attempt to start the pump we hear a little knock and get this uh, alarm this overcurrent alarm and that can't be good at all if I bring it back to reset the panel seems to work fine when I hit start I do feel this this quick bump in the motor and it tells me that at least probably the electronics here are working maybe the motor seized I don't know I tried to get my hand in the basket earlier and see if I could rotate it and I felt as though I could but I don't know how good the rotation is and I don't feel like spending another a thousand dollars on one of these new multi-stage pumps so I figured I'm gonna rip this pump out and, and give it a try and fix it so we're gonna shut her down disassemble it and uh, see if we could get it going again let's get started yeah, and if you don't know how to do this this is a spectator sport because this is the kind of stuff that will kill you and I'm not responsible so I'll point out that we're gonna de-energize this and this thing if the chlorinator is not on takes a good few seconds to cut power uh, before it finally runs out of juice. Not that I'm in a rush to run and jump to start eating the wires. I just wanted to point that out. It's still on right now. Like you can see, it's it's still on. I've cut that power. And there you go. Now it's off. All that time later, me babbling. So now it's dead. Now I can take out the power, cut the PVC pipes, which is the easiest way to do it, and pull this pump out. And just so I don't have a stupid senile moment, I'm red tagging this bad boy. There's no way I'm accidentally going in here and turning on these breakers once I disconnect this 240 volts. I really don't need that type of aggravation. So I made my first cut. That's the top side cut to take that pipe off. A lot of this PVC, I don't, I don't salvage. I just replace it. You know, uh, some of this has been on here a while. Uh, some of the connections are older than others. This was recently replaced. Some of these pieces, part of the uh, sole chlorinator. It really doesn't matter. It's cheap. I rip it off. Throw new stuff on. Right now, it's all about getting the pump out of there. And once detached, all I'm doing is is just spinning this one off here. There's just a threaded connection with some sealant is all that is just to get it out of the way then I'll remove the old sealant we could see down into the pump but I don't I don't think we could hit anything that turns just yet no need to get excited we'll get this on the bench back some liquid tight connector that I just spin off pop that out and uh, I'm gonna have to remove this fitting here to get to the wire connectors and that cover comes off to expose the connections inside take those out I like to straighten everything back out. It makes it easier to pull it back through the hole once the liquidite here is loosened from the fitting. There's also an earth ground cable that's under here. You can see that blue cable going in. That should be removed as well. Mine was completely rusted onto the fitting. I decided rather than break the connection, I'll deal with it later. I could always put a coupling on here. That may be the smart move if you can't get the screwdriver to open up that screw on the fitting. Now I've got the pump fully separated from everything else. Now I'll drain the water out with the drain plugs on the other side. I was trying to keep it as heavy as possible up until now, making it easier to cut through the pipe. It's located right here. We'll wait for this to empty out. Now that at least I have it on a higher surface, I'll open it up and have a look inside. I was able to get in there and rotate it barely with my fingers, all the way down there. You can't even see it because it's in too deep. But I, um, I noticed that when I do that, there is rotation on the back, some sort of ventilation fan or some kind, yeah. So I'm going to remove this cover and try and rotate from here, have a look. I rotate this, it, it, it doesn't seem to bind. I mean, it's not, it's not stuck. It doesn't give me the idea that something terrible happened in here. I mean, it's not, it doesn't spin freely, but yeah. I'm going to have to go in a little bit further now and see if there's some sort of damage within the motor itself are short because like I said when, when you turn on it would it would bump and then it would stop it detects high current like a short so we're gonna have to go in on this you know I worst case scenario is I'm gonna have to break this down and replace the the motor portion of this you know which is better than than replacing the, the entire unit right but but still I want to see what's going on here I'm gonna start by taking off the control units so I don't damage it just get this out of the way I have to remove this before I could get down to the screws that connect it and to the fixture of the motor itself this also includes the uh, three screws here that are under the cover. So these have to come out, they're long screws. The whole cover lifts up, I check for any breach. I, I don't see any here, everything's nice and dry. Nothing happened in here. We're gonna take a closer inspection inside the house, but right now it's just about getting this out of here. Another thing worth noting, these red wires, this is the uh, 
this is the power coming in so see some separation here on the board here for the power as it's laid out the control unit will lift up right off of the motor we can see where it connects right over here there's some mastic that holds it in place making it a little difficult to remove but the three screws that held on the top controller were actually the three screws that held the, con the whole control unit on as you see here this is also the first time we get to see the actual part number that we need so if we do need to go that route for my particular unit it's a 350105 and this was made in february 2011 in some labor camp in Pyongyang. So there we go, we have that information. Think of this like an old Volkswagen engine. The more you pull off of it, the less is broken. And that's how I'm kind of looking at this. As I start breaking this down, eventually we're gonna to get to the housing, open up the housing, you know, look at the bearings. If the bearings look so okay, we'll get to the uh, get to the motor. Maybe we'll find something, maybe we won't. It may come down to replacing this, this motor after all. But like I said, uh, compared to $1,400, you know, $400 is, is a lot better way to go. And it's going to require disassembly whether we're replacing the motor or, or not. So We're going to put the 15 mil to these six bolts that holds the, um, the motor to this uh, uh, front filter housing and take it off. Six bolts came right out. i got to tell you, it's a lot easier than working on a car by a million miles. So give a little tug and break the seal and, and this just kind of pops out, no problem at all. And now we could uh, remove this from the area and, and this is all that we're working with now. We're just making this smaller. And if you work on cars like me, you've already put the, uh, the bolts back into the case so you don't lose them. You don't know how many days it's going to be before this thing goes back together. And nothing sucks more than not being able to find the parts that you just took apart. Now I'm going to go and remove this black outer shroud here. There are two hex nuts, one over here and one over here that will come out. Next is going to be this inner plastic turbine. Uh, this screw right here is reverse thread. So <laughs> keep that in mind when you remove it. This is reverse thread. Once the screw has been removed, grab this rear cooling fan securely. Don't break it. Hold it steady. And turn this um, impeller here counterclockwise to unscrew it from the shaft like this in this direction while holding the impeller and it will come out and off of this unit I've got it started enough that I could do it with one hand now this is just what's left in the spline and there we go it is removed we're now free to remove the four nuts that hold on the second portion of the housing. We'll do that now. And no, it's not 15. These are 14. Once the nuts were out, give it two light taps with the back of the ratchet and it completely separates from the uh, electric motor. And now I can remove it from the motor. Uh, be sure that the seal doesn't drop. Mine separated. That's just fine. And take it off. And here is that piece disconnected from the unit. Just like that, go put that somewhere safe. That piece is done. One important note to point out here is that I didn't see a breach of any kind. I don't see any rust or anything or any water getting in through this front section here, which means the front bearing probably wasn't contaminated. According to the part number, this is the complete breakdown for the motor. As a matter of fact, the, the shield that I removed here that goes over this is actually part of the motor. This is gonna be a pain uh, to remove. This fan is part of the disassembly think about how to do this because this is pressed on and I don't want to break it you can see by the way I mean the thing turns it's nothing magical but I mean it does turn it's not seized but then we didn't see the problem in, in a seizure we saw the problem electrically as a short so this is the breakdown now we're gonna move into opening the case splitting the case here we're gonna start in the front because it looks like the easiest and then we'll see what's going on with the back